All right, I appreciate your time. Welcome back to Toronto. Yeah. I think this is the first time you guys have been here in about three years. Yeah. Ish. Something um, like that. I don't think we've had a live date in town here for the Path of Totality. I'm looking forward to seeing some of that stuff live. We will be doing some of it live. Awesome. It's really fun to do, man, because there's just so much going on. It's so big and powerful. And, you know, I enjoy it. Awesome. Now, you've been doing a lot of press, obviously, for the new album. Um, I've read a couple articles, front cover articles on Metal Hammer and, uh, and Revolver. Love that Revolver cover, by the way. <laughs> The sweaters are freaking priceless. Yeah, you know, when we were doing that, I was like, you know, we're we're always like pretty open to try new things. Obviously, you know that about corn. And uh, they're like, all right, you're gonna put on this uh, this turtleneck, and I'm like, man, I'm claustrophobic a little bit, you know. So I put the turtleneck on anyways. Right on, man. I do like that about corn that you are willing to try new things, and I'm curious that. You put something up online, and the majority of the first postings are all negative. I don't, yeah. I don't understand that. Like your fans have to. Well, be... I don't know if you guys have it up here in Canada, but where we're from, there's a lot of like there'll be shirts or hats, and they say "I love haters." Yeah, you guys have that. Like, yeah, yeah. Big, it's a yeah. big thing. I want to come out with my own that says, "Haters will like it later," because <laughs> they always end up, you know, yeah. oh, you know, I had to grow on me, or what, you know, it's like. They're just, most haters are uncomfortable to come out of their own little box, you know. They're like, I like blind. Cool. Yeah. You're still in the front row. Yeah. That's <laughs> almost 20 years old. Yeah. And if you liked blind 20 years ago, what are you listening to right now? And why aren't you blind. progressing with a band, right? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't matter because we still do a little bit for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's like, this is how it is these days. And if you're in the current world, you got to be current. And for the older cats, we'll do some, you know, we still do some old stuff. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about Don Gilmore? What it was like working with him? It was cool working with Don Gilmore because he's a, a musician. You know, he, he was able to play drums, bass, guitar, harmonies, everything. Yeah. You don't run into that all the time. So, it was a, so right off the top, you have like a, you kind of let your ball down. You're like, well, this guy's a better musician than all of us. <laughs> you know, so it's like... Yeah. It's kind of cool to work with someone like that, and he, and he gave a, you know a lot of good ideas, and it's nice working with him. Does Corn have like a mantra or a mission statement when they go in to record and write new material? It's always different. That's what I think. That's why it works, and you're always going to get something fresh and new. You know, like we'll take different approaches. Right. Just like Path to Totality was a complete different approach. We've done everything that you can imagine. Every way of sitting with the, you know, me and Monkey facing each other with the drum machine. Right, right. To playing with the whole entire band together to, you know, one guitar riff or a bass starting it or just whatever. We're just open to, to whatever. To, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes I'll pick a guitar up and play it. Sometimes John will pick up my bass and it just doesn't matter. Was the recording process for this album any different from previous albums? And if so, could you describe how? I think that, um, the only thing that was different was with head coming back, you know, it was like it brought everything fresh and new again, yeah. you know, and it was done pretty much the old school way of the whole band in the room just jamming out and just ripping ideas. And so I guess it was kind of old school way of approach. I mean, you talked you talked a lot, obviously, about head coming back into the band. Is there was there any kind of um, trepidation going into the studio again with someone who had departed from the band 10 years ago or was it was it natural you know I guess from us growing up as kids together it's natural it's like you know he, he left for eight years it's almost like if you know your family every year has a uh, Christmas and one family member doesn't make it for eight years and they show up and you're like hey you know yeah. come grab some food and right, right. it's just there was more there's more to it than just a, a band that got formed Right. So we're kind of brothers, and you know, it was just like, like it was just yesterday. Awesome. I haven't heard the whole album yet. I've only heard the two songs that have officially been released. Um, so I can't really talk to any of the uh, the other nine tracks that are on the, the commercial yeah. release. But I like Never Never, and I like Love and Math. I'm assuming you're you might play them tonight because they've already kind of been soft released. Yeah, we're gonna be playing. Um, 
Never Never and Love and Meth Tonight, their new songs, and they feel really strong and, and better than anything we've done in like, honestly, like 20 years. You know, it's crazy to have something that powerful up there. And, and we are gonna do uh, another track, Pray For Me, which is awesome. such a huge, heavy, just banging. Everything that you wanna hear in, in one corn song is that track. Nice. So, you know, um, the album should be out soon. You know, I heard it got leaked. I, I but I haven't checked it out yet. But, uh, I, look for that stuff, I heard it so. got leaked yesterday. Really? Yesterday or something. But uh, it was disappointing. <laughs> you know, go out. You know, ask the fans. Go out, support it, and yeah, buy yeah. it. I still go out and support and buy just because it's getting rough. You want to yeah. see your you're like, oh, how come they never come around and come to town? Can't afford it, man. Because everybody's <laughs> yeah. not supporting it like they used to back in my day. I would support my bands. You know. And we've successfully added a what five members two thousand dollar waiver for you to come in because it's an extra four or five hundred bucks to come to canada for every musician yeah which it's whacked it's crazy it's getting harder that. and harder and harder that's why we're like man support your artists you know because it's getting harder for us to come and do what we do i love that you're doing a theater run playing smaller venues for your fans it's going to be a phenomenal show and i understand you've just introduced or announced uh, tour with Zombie. It's yeah, before the end of the year, right? Yeah. This this right now is a good one to catch. The, I don't know. Obviously, we're already here. You're not gonna catch it now, but <laughs> we're doing a. It's like a. It's almost like a commercial or an advertisement. You know, so we're playing really small places and just kind of advertising. Nice. You know, and promotional run. It's nice because sometimes we'll have to do like a like a press tour. Yeah. And there's, we don't play. We're just doing this. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of sucks because we like to play. So it's like yeah. we're getting both. So it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's two versions of the new album coming out. There's a standard version and there's a deluxe version. And there's two extra tracks on the deluxe version. Can you talk about those those two songs and why they were only included on a, a premium edition? You know. It's funny because we always do like a deluxe version yeah. and it always tends to sell better than all the regular corn stuff. That's not true for most artists, but for our, for some reason, the corn fans dig it. I think because the two songs that don't make it are always the ones that are the ultimate everything that is corn tracks. And they're just the, the heaviest. They're just, a, it's, I think that's what makes it so special. It's like, you want the real deal, get the bonus track. Did you sequence them into the album differently, or are they just tacked on at the end? They're, you know, we always put them as bonus track, um, yeah. and then we always throw like we always do a real like intimate type DVD, you know, and some personal behind the scenes, and just you know all kinds of it's just cool stuff that I think if I was a fan I would want. Shit, I used to watch Corn TV, man. So. Oh I yeah, mean, back in the day, <laughs> Corn TV. Yeah, just try to do you know things that you, that I think I would want yeah. from fans. Can you, uh, can you tell me what Die Another Day is? Is that a cover, or is that just another track that's on the Japanese edition? You know, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, who are your favorite bassists, and why? My favorite bassists are... I mean, you know, over the years, it's been... Flea's been consistent for me. Yeah. From the very old to new, everything. I love what that guy does. He's just a great bass player. Um, but uh, you know, other than that, like, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of music. <laughs> I really don't. I just don't listen to music. I'm like, when I'm away from this, I'm home. I have five kids. I'm like, you know, just hanging with the kids and like. Even in the car, if I'm driving, you know, I got the TVs on in the back for the kids. They're watching like their little kid movies or whatever. Yeah. But it's kind of nice for me because I get to step away from all this, and I just don't. At, the, at the, this season of my life, it could change. I'd dive back in, but nothing really right now. Can you talk a little bit about um, recording in your own studio in, uh, in Bakersfield? Yeah, recording was pretty cool to go back to Bakersfield, and you know, we're all from there, yeah. so it kind of brought this vibe, family values vibe little plug right there yeah. yep because <laughs> um, we'd be like you know it's weird we're like okay let's take a dinner break and we go to head's house and his parents are making us you know dad's barbecue and tri-tip and the whole band sitting at a dinner table like in a family vibe type it was real cool and, and like then we would go we all went to my mom's house one night she made spaghetti for everybody and we're all hanging out and it's just being home and, and bringing that vibe, I think it gave us complete 
we were like really comfortable. So when you're comfortable, you can really create everything that you need to flow out of you. I think that's what it took. Nice. And I'll, I got one last one for you. If you could, could you pick one moment in the past 20 years that's a special corn moment for you? Um, special corn moment would be Yeah, you know what? Maybe uh, it still holds, and it's hard to ever top, and I don't know if we ever will, is we did in 1999, we did Woodstock, um, and it was 250 or 350,000 people. Yeah. I don't know the number. Those, that's both a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> and it was like just a, you can look out, and I remember I couldn't see the end of the heads of people. And because uh, music travels, sound travels, it takes a while, so... As soon as we started blind, oh, are you ready? The whole place is jumping, but it was a wave because the sound was hitting them later, so they weren't jumping in time. Yeah. So it just looked like like the ocean, you know, and just the vibe and the energy and, and man, how are you gonna top that, you know? That's other awesome. than that, I'll take it away from that. The other moments are, you know, smaller ones of getting together and we're all eating dinner at Head's family's house. <laughs> nice. You know, or you know, things like that are cool. It's cool little moments. Awesome, man. I appreciate it.